Last week, a teenager shot a 15-year-old student at Magruder High School, and he apparently used a ghost gun that he bought in parts online and put it together at home. Joining us now on Capital Review is Maryland Delegate Leslie Lopez. Delegate Lopez, thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to Capital Review. So, aside from the shooting that we saw last week, the topic of ghost guns is getting a lot of attention now, but you and State Senator Susan Lee have been proposing legislation to ban ghost guns for years now. Why has this been important for you, and can you talk to us about what it took to get to the current bill that you had on the House floor this week? Well, first, thanks for having me, Tasman. This is an issue that I've been working on since I became a part of the legislature four years ago. And so um, just this recent shooting at Magruder High School is really um, just another data point in the constellation of data that points to very startling trends that we've seen, not here just in Maryland, um, but across the nation. And so, um, you know, that tragedy right now, there's a lot of momentum for people um, to kind of finally become aware that this is such a problem. Uh, but the work has been ongoing and it's been in various different forms over the past uh, four years. At first, um, there was a big concentration about talking about 3D printed firearms. And it was, you know, really kind of an intellectual exercise. We wanted to get ahead of what we thought was going to be a trend. But um, since starting those conversations with law enforcement officers across the state, it's become really clear that the polymer 80s are the weapon of choice for people who are uh, committing crimes. So how easy is it for someone to buy a ghost gun, like you said, just assemble it? And would a state ban of a ghost gun actually make a difference? Sure. So um, it is very, very easy to buy the pieces of these components online. In fact, the only real delay is in um, stock. Sometimes you have to wait because there's um, pieces are on back order. That's really been my experience. Um, you can you can purchase a receiver that's unfinished. That's the part of the firearm that's considered a firearm by federal law and by state law. Um, it's kind of like the chassis of a car. It puts all the mechanical component or um, houses all the mechanical components is probably the best way to describe it. Um, you can buy one for maybe less than $100, $80 is what I purchased um, an unfinished receiver for an AR-15 for um, in the past. Uh, no, no ID check, um, no question about whether you are a prohibited person, whether you have a history of, um, of violence or uh, you've been in mental crisis or um, you have a protective order if you're of age. None of those questions. It just simply ask for your shipping address and your, your billing address. Um, and then in terms of will this, will this bill stop ghost gun, the proliferation of ghost guns, well, it's really aimed at stopping the supply chain. So there's a grandfather clause in place for people who have these type of firearms in their possession already and who are illegal law abiding uh, gun owners. I believe in responsible gun ownership. It's, um, it's a right that's enumerated in the Constitution and that Second Amendment isn't going anywhere. But we have to make sure that our laws are modernized um, for, for the criminal marketplace. And so cutting off the supply chain of these unregulated no background check firearms is the best way to do it. Um, we, of course, have to put some type of penalties in place for people who are caught using them, but the goal of this legislation is really to cut off the supply chain. Daggett Lopez, how would something that's been untraceable for so long actually be regulated and reported? Well, the beauty of this bill this year is that we anticipate the ATF coming up with a new rule. And so our bill takes into account what the changes the federal level are gonna be and then codify them. So uh, two big things. One is that ATF is redefining when a gun is actually a gun. Right now, there's a question of, of a firearm being finished or unfinished. They're changing the definition to simply mean the casing of a firearm. So that, that really changes um, the law in a significant way. The other part of this is that there's been um, a court case out of Las Vegas that helps us um, understand the constitutionality of what you can regulate in terms of ghost guns. And so a lot of those big hurdles that were lingering questions have been cleared in the past year, and we're really in a good place to come up with a law uh, in Maryland that will reflect um, the intention of what they're trying to do at the federal level. Of course, when you have an executive order and a regulation, which is what's going on um, at the federal level, you know, the next president who comes in could change everything. So it's really important that we codify um, the intention of this bill, of the intention of this law, so that we Marylanders can be safe no matter who's president. Delegate Lopez, thank you so much for joining us on Capital Review and for breaking that down for us.